That guy. Well, before you start writing, you kind of have to see the telltale sign of having used the chain rule. And it's all kind of here. Obviously, these two guys stayed, stayed together. So, we have this. We have its derivative. And then we have the derivative of square root of x. So it's a, so it's a good sign. So, I guess when you follow my advice of paying attention to the most complicated element, it would be the cosine squared of e to the square root of x. And that invites tangent of e to the square root of x. Because it's 1 over, so just to summarize, it's 1 over cosine squared of something. It probably came from tangent of that something. Okay, so all the elements are here. We just have to be systematic about unwrapping this puzzle. And when you do this repeated integration by substitution, instead of going from complicated to simple, you go backwards, from simple to complicated. Because I want to have the square root of x, and I don't yet. I have 1 over 2 square root of x. Well, that's not a problem. That's good, actually, because this is the derivative, this being on the bottom, of square root of x. So let me recognize that by writing d square root of x. Okay, so this portion, which was 1 over 2 square root of x, which I'm recognizing as the derivative of square root of x, gets documented, that recognition, as the square root of x, basically under the derivative sign. It's basically derivative of square root of x. That's all I'm really saying. That what I'm looking, what I was looking at here, is the derivative of square root of x. So I just documented it. That's how this technique helps. It documents what you recognized in the previous step. And the rest I'm copying. And now, importantly, I stop perceiving square root of x as the square root of x. To me, it's now as simple as u, or as simple as w, or z, or any other letter. It just becomes that, that integral, indivisible kind of symbol. It's just a different smiley face. That's really all it is. But I'm keeping it as the square root. I don't want to switch it to a different letter because then I would have to switch back. And why if I have it so nicely in here already? And if this is just a letter, like u, then this right here is both e to the u, I keep using the letter u, but that's okay, and also its derivative, which is great because that's what we want. We want the derivative of this, and here it is. Given that the square root of x is already under the derivative sign. So we're literally doing the chain rule backwards. And that makes the whole sense because, you know, chain, what's a chain? I'm going to use a semantic argument. It's one link after another, after another, after another, after another. That's how you build a chain. So if you wanted to undo that chain, you would do the last one, second to last one, third to last one, third, you know, you would go backwards. Right? If you unwrap the chain, if you follow the chain one way, when you come back, you, you follow your links in the opposite order. That's kind of what we're doing here. Okay, so this is now I'm now recognizing this as the derivative of e to the square root of x. And so I'm going to shove that under the d symbol. And now I have, again, for the time being, as you're working on switching from the old way to the new way, and all I insist on is that you give this a shot. I understand that old habits die hard. But just give this an honest shot, and I don't think you'll ever go back. But just to be more comfortable, imagine this being a different letter like u. And then you have du over cosine squared of u. And that's clearly tangent of u plus a constant. So you're basically done. I'm going to end right here. So the only thing that you really have to retrain yourself is to be able to see this symbol as just one thing like any other letter.